my coach called it the anchor point of the golf swing. Post, anchor point. Watch how I don't really leave the anchor point. So for me, I can push off and then rotate where so many have to try to find that anchor point again in their downswing. And then what happens is that time they spend posting up gets the body yeah. facing the ball too long and the hands get overactive. On the on the master class, I've watched like the first series. Okay. On the setup. Okay, setup. Yeah. I had a couple questions. Of course, yep. the hip bump. I know this was a big question. Big. Question. <laughs> on the on the thing the other day. Cause it's so unique. So I, you know, seeing you in person do it may might be easier for me. I also had a, you had something on the arms where, so like if I'm like this to to do this. The giving blood this is to the sky more. Yeah. Yep. I was doing that. I was playing that the other day, and a lot of my shots kept ballooning. Way in the air. Yeah, so I don't know if it was, if I was doing this too much or getting my grip out of whack or what I was doing. Yeah, you know, it, 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 here's the thing. You, so, question question one, uh, you know, just on, on, on the arms and the elbows, right? Yeah. Really, what it is, you know, the left one, I don't, you know, yeah, it's just, you know, I'm not, like this. Right. I'm just naturally holding the golf club. Like yeah. I can hold it at the side of my body right here. Yeah, because my natural one's like this. Yeah, don't, so change, don't change the left one. Okay, so I, I was doing this. So what happened <laughs> yeah. here was when he changed the left one, yeah. he explained that Matt explained that his, his um, shots were ballooning. Now, yeah. think about this. When you did that with the left one, what does yeah. that do to the grip? It weakens the grip. Yeah, definitely. And when it yeah. weakens the grip, it opens the face. Uh -huh. So there's your, there's your okay. high shot right there. But here's the thing. The left arm is just in front of the body here. The one we really want to pay attention to is the right arm. Right. Now, and here's how I explain this. The right arm, like you're giving blood, mm -hmm. is key. But here's the big thing. If I'm gripping the golf club, I'm just pulling my right funny bone right here into my left arm yeah. and getting the forearm up a little bit. But here's the thing, not mm -hmm. changing my grip while doing so. Right. If I have to feel like I have to literally slide my grip underneath, uh -huh. well, then I've overdone it. Okay. okay. So, so if I were to do this, that's wrong. Uh, yes. But if I were to just... Right there. Exactly. Like that. And what's great about it though, what is really nice about it, and what's nice about it for you too and knowing mm -hmm. your swing a little bit, you know, yeah. it's, it does keep this tray alarm in a much better spot. Right. It allows that right arm to fold the right way. Uh -huh. And really what we mean by that is so many people are here and then they get there or they're here and then it just has to then yeah. roll into position. That's not what we want. We want it to be there and just, it's like yeah. I always tell my players, you're given blood, you're shaking hands, and you're holding the tray at the top. Okay. Okay? Yeah. You're giving blood, you're shaking hands, and you're holding the tray at the top. Put a club in your hand, giving blood, shaking hands, and holding a tray at the top. Okay. And really what that does is it just keeps the arms and the body right. more together, yeah. keeps the hands and in front of your body. You know one of my problems always has been taking away it like this. Abs absolutely. So if I've already started there, maybe I can't roll but it you, Well, hopefully what you do yeah. is you don't have to roll that arm into position. Right. So what we do by having that arm in that position already, it's like, well, hey, listen, I'm just turning and I'm just keeping this guy, yeah. you know, my big thing is I just keep this. You know, and that's yeah, right in front of that center. So right. um, hip bump wise. Yeah, so then the hip bump, I didn't know, even after watching it, I didn't know, is it this or is it this? Combination of both. Okay. So it's it's actually exactly yeah ready uh -huh. okay there you go all in one move right there all right. taking the pelvis and literally going like this taking taking the left uh -huh. femur top of it yeah and moving it right on top of your left knee yeah like, okay. and then making sure as you do that the hip stays square as you do it exactly okay. look at that that's yeah. perfect right there. And what you do is you set up that post. Uh-huh. You yeah, set I'm up that, around this. that yeah. brace. Okay. And what's really, really nice about that too is, you know, I love the shadow being where it's at right now. Check this out. Gabe, you can film it over my shoulder. You ready? Yeah. So when I, if I'm stripping down, see, I don't match that. I don't match this, this, uh, this angle yet, but watch this. When I bump that hip. Yeah. You see how it creates that spine angle? Right. And okay, so now so, this is right in the middle. So watch, watch this. As I turn. Look how I'm turning around that, and look mm -hmm. how my back has that angle right there. Yeah. And that's not because I'm swaying off the ball. 
right. it's because look at this boom that pelvis set me there uh -huh. to then make that turn so yeah. what's what's funny is you know um we we, we uh if done wrong the hip bump can negate your turn right and then if done or, or restrict it and then when done correctly it just opens up your turn so i always tell people when you bump your hip if you if you feel it restrict you at all you haven't even come close to doing that right right but if you actually feel like wait oh you know yeah. it, it puts me in there and it does it in a way that doesn't hurt your back it takes right. all the pressure off your back and especially yeah. the lower back it made sense for this to cut to me just because then mm -hmm. I was almost started the turn already. It started the turn. It initiates yeah. a turn. Absolutely. Right. So, so you know, that's the real big thing. I, I, I watch my players, and I always try to make sure feet, hips, shoulders, arms are square. Right. But if they're ever going to be anything, I would much rather see your hips a couple degrees closed, if anything, yeah. to help the golfer actually make a turn. Yeah. I never want to see the golfer over here to where they have to right. work extra hard yeah, so to be able to get I think that's turn. what I meant was the couple degrees closed made sense because I yeah. feel like I'm already starting, but you're saying it's really more like this. Absolutely. It's, 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 okay. it's, setting, that, it's setting those hips, you guys, like, like if you watch this, boom. Yeah. And as I do that, it just makes it very easy to understand. The pressure is already yeah. loaded on the inside right here. It's on the flat of this foot, on the ball of this foot, and on the inside of this foot. Yeah. And I'm almost adding, I'm not almost, I am adding pressure into where pressure already exists. Does that make sense? Sure. So a lot of people don't know where the pressure points are on their feet. They're mm -hmm. setting up dead neutral to it. And they're sitting there just straight up and down like an, like an L, lowercase mm -hmm. L, just right up and down. And then they're trying to create those angles or try to find the pressure right. points in their feet and that's when you get the swaying and mm -hmm. the bobbing around so when yeah. i'm going like this and i'm getting in there and i go bump well now i just felt the pressure get on the inside of my right uh -huh. i felt the pressure on now the ball of my left you know what's funny and when i turn man i'm just adding more pressure into those points to where pressure already is existing right. so uh, that that right there is a big one. It's not like it's you're not into that those pressure points, and then you're finding them in the swing. It's like no, they're there already, and you're just getting deeper into them as you turn. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, well, and, and you know what the great news is? Here in person today, so, so I'll yeah. make sure you're doing it right. I needed to see that in person. You need to see I watched it. the videos. I kept watching. I was like, yeah, I and, think and, I'm doing this right. And for our viewer, by yeah. the way, too, I, I want them to know that you're not the only one, Matt. This is a. I mean, you could see by our first, yeah. our master class and our first live session that was the most common question and we actually we knew that going in i mean uh -huh. it's like no matter how well i describe that someone's gonna you know they're gonna want a little bit of help with that so it's nice that you're actually asking this right now so it hopefully educates the viewer more we we obviously know that you know we've heard my talk about how spine angle and the pelvis are perpendicular let's just use yeah. belt line pelt and spine angle right well we know that, yeah, if I bump him forward, yeah, the spine kicks back. But my goal is not to have this look to where it's like a reverse C. I'm just keeping this dead still right here. And then I'm locking in that pelvis the way that we explained. And you can see it has a direct straight line. I, okay. I'm just directly perpendicular. And does that seem to get you more over the ball as it well? It does. You know, it's funny. Yeah. Watch what happens when I do it. Mm -hmm. See that immediately, like, yeah. it, 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 it's funny how that move for me, I have it figured out to the point now where it, like, it puts me in my posture mm -hmm. and in my, not only my tilt this way, but my tilt this way. Right. Yeah, because you also talked about that setup in the first seven series of videos where to make sure you're playing underneath you. It's huge. And this Huge. is doing. This is promoting that as well. So our our tendency, um, yeah. and Matt and I are buddies. We've 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 worked together a little bit, huh. and you know we've we made some pretty big strides actually. We, we from where from we originally. haven't talked about this, but I had other problems that yeah, you were we, dealing with, right? We we yeah. yeah. And, and here's what's funny. I mean, we in the first. If I pull up our first lesson, yeah, the hip bump was in there. It was, was in it? there, but yeah, okay. you had too much other stuff going on. We could, okay. we were, we were working on takeaway and all this other stuff, yeah, trying yeah. to straighten it out. But yeah, any any time I do a setup, you're always going to hear hip bump, but you're going to hear hips over ankles, shoulders tilted past toes, right? Golf underneath you versus around you. But the big thing about it was, you know, right here, 
and, and, and now we're, we're, we're engaging this a little bit more forward. What it's going to do is it's going to help your upper body turn behind the ball yeah. without ever having to sway off the ball to do so. That's right. a real big point of emphasis there that I try to make is, look at this, not only does it help me turn behind the ball, but then I don't have to post back up on the way down. I'm already there, so I can now right. rotate around that fixed point that I've yeah. already created. My coach called it the anchor point of the golf swing. Post, anchor point. Watch how I don't really leave the anchor point. So for me, I can push off and then rotate mm -hmm. where so many have to try to find that anchor point again in their downswing. And then what happens is that time they spend posting up gets the body yeah. facing the ball too long and the hands get overactive. Right, so I think the general move I might have been doing to get my shoulder behind the ball was also to do this. Uh, yeah, right. Right. So, Matt's, so then I have to yeah. do this. Coming and, and you, we're, we try to take away lateral movement with your swing, yeah. but one thing we're going to work on today after we set up properly, mm -hmm. we're going to continue to work on um, uh, some of the other questions that our viewers had uh, from our master class was, you know, where that shoulder, where that, how that shoulder dictates the, where the hands go, how the shoulder can also not only turn the body properly, meaning the turns coming from the back of the shoulder, yeah. but also so is that downward pressure mat into the handle. Right. That sets that golf club. Because our, right. our big tendency, and you'll, you'll, you guys will see it, is th we want to open up right away, mm -hmm. right? And this has always been our thing. So from, from understanding how to use the back of that left arm, and you can see how I'm not actually actively moving my club up the plane, I'm literally turning it up the plane. Yeah. You know, and that's one thing that Tiger does so well when you watch Tiger's old swings, you'll see very little hand action, maybe a little mm -hmm. downward pressure, but you'll see the club just like this. And then it just look at my body's turns moving that up the plane. Right. So that's one thing we'll we'll talk so you're about. Never today. lifting, you're just never turning. lifting, never rolling. Yeah. No yeah, I got through the part on the live video where you're talking about the beach ball. Beach ball, yep. Yes, yeah, so I got I got I got that far in it. Cool, cool, so. cool. Thank you guys so much for watching our video. Any questions or comments you have, please leave them below. Also, click the link below to pick up three free videos. We appreciate you guys. Enjoy our channel.